I'm sharing with you how to make a gingerbread house from scratch, from the gingerbread recipe and the template to the decorating. This is a fun recipe leading up to Christmas that you can eat at the end or use as decoration for the rest of the month. Welcome to Recipes by Karina, where I show you how to make classic and simply delicious recipes. Make sure to subscribe for a new video each week. I also have a bunch of other Christmas recipes here on my channel, so make sure to subscribe and take a look. The first thing we need to do is make the gingerbread dough for the house. This gingerbread recipe is a bit different from your standard gingerbread cookie as it needs to be strong enough to hold up a house for a good length of time. I usually have mine all throughout December and it holds up perfectly. In a saucepan, measure out your butter, one stick, half a cup, or 113 grams. You'll notice I give all of the measurements in metric and imperial, so no matter where you're from, it should be easy enough to follow. If you'd like the full recipe and printable template for this gingerbread house, it will be on my website, as well as the full measurements in the description box below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and take a look at my other Christmas recipes. To the butter, add the golden syrup, molasses or corn syrup, whatever you can get your hands on. Molasses is more traditional for gingerbread and it will also give the best colour. It may also be called treacle, although if you can't find it, substituting with the others works fine. For spices, we'll need ground ginger and ground cinnamon, 4 teaspoons of each. These have the best aroma that will make your house smell of Christmas and finally add a cup and a quarter or 250 grams of brown sugar. Let me know in the description box below if you've ever made a gingerbread house before. I usually make one each year, challenging myself to a more complicated design each time. This template is super simple, which is best when you're first starting out, but if you're wanting something a little more complicated, I would recommend looking for inspiration and drawing up your own template using the measurements from this as a starting point. Place the saucepan over medium to low heat and stir occasionally until the butter has melted and the ingredients are well combined. In a large mixing bowl or the bowl of your stand mixer, measure out your flour. You'll need 6.5 cups or 810 grams. This may seem like a huge amount, but we're making a lot of gingerbread here. Make sure you're using a large enough bowl to be able to mix everything together. You might be noticing there's no baking powder or baking soda in this recipe, but flour is the only dry ingredient we need. Add baking powder or soda would make the dough rise in the oven, causing it to chain shape even the smallest amount, which is something we don't want. There's nothing worse than baking all of the pieces, then finding out they've changed shape and don't fit together anymore. Trust me, I've had it happen. It's completely normal for your pieces to shrink a little in the oven, but they should all do this the same amount so it shouldn't affect you. Pour your melted butter mixture into the bowl with the flour, along with a cup and a quarter of milk. Using a wooden spoon or an electric mixer, combine the dough together. This is a really good arm workout if you're doing it by hand. The dough should be very thick and extremely sticky. Cover the mixed dough with plastic wrap and place into the fridge for at least 4 hours or overnight. During this time, the dough will firm up, meaning it's so much easier to roll out and will hold its shape while cutting out the house pieces. When you're ready to roll out your dough, you'll need a template. I have a printable one that I've designed for this house on my website, which you can find by clicking the link in the description box below, or by going to recipesbykarina.com. Alternatively, if you don't have a printer, I have the measurements listed on the template which you can use to draw it yourself with a ruler. You'll need two side pieces, two roof pieces, a front and back, a door and four sides to the chimney. The roof pieces and the side pieces are the same on both sides, so make sure you remember you need two of each. Once you have printed out or drawn up your template, cut it out and set it to the side while we work on the dough. The easiest way to roll out the dough is between two sheets of non-stick paper. 
This way you can transfer the house pieces straight to a baking sheet. Basically, the less you need to handle it, the better, so it doesn't change shape. Take about a cup's worth of gingerbread dough. You don't need to measure it, it's just an estimation, and place it on a sheet. Top with the next sheet and use a rolling pin, or if you don't have one, a wine bottle actually works just as well. Roll out the dough until it is about half a centimetre or a quarter of an inch thick. It will be very hard to roll out at first as it's straight out of the fridge, but just be patient and you'll get there. Check the thickness of the dough and when it is correct, check it's big enough to fit the template you are using. If it's big enough, you can do two different cuts, but I tend to do them all separately and just the door and chimney together. Before you cut, place the dough on a baking sheet and place it back into the fridge for about 15 minutes, or if your freezer is large enough, place it in there for 5 minutes instead. One tip I have for you is make sure your dough is as cold as possible. If the dough gets soft, there is no way you'll be able to get a clean cut, it sticks to everything and it's just too difficult to work with. After 15 minutes in the fridge, remove the top piece of paper and place your template on the dough. Using a large sharp knife, line it up against the template and do one straight cut. This is much more precise than using a small knife and cutting along. Repeat until you've cut all of the outside lines, pulling the template off and removing the excess dough, placing it back into the bowl to be used again. As you pull the excess dough off, you may notice some untidy lines. Just use your knife here to sharpen them up. You can leave the house like this without windows and draw them on after, or use a smaller knife to cut them out. I'm using the template, but also doing it freehand to cut out four small windows instead of one large window. Another option here is you can create a stained glass effect by using crushed up candies or lollies which will melt in the oven. This can look really impressive if you put some sort of lights on the inside of the house. Place your house piece back on the baking sheet and place into the fridge again for 15 minutes before they go into the oven. It's important you do this as it helps reduce any shrinkage of the dough. Bake your gingerbread in a 180 degree Celsius or 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for 15 to 20 minutes or until they are golden brown. They will be soft when you remove them from the oven, but they'll firm up as they cool. Repeat this process with the remaining dough until you have two sides, a back and a front, two roof tiles, four chimney pieces and a front door. You can bake all the pieces together or bake a few at a time while you're working on the rest. You'll probably have leftover dough, you can use this to make trees or gingerbread men or even a fence throughout the front of your house. Leave your gingerbread to cool completely before decorating or assembling your house. To decorate and assemble the house, we'll need royal icing. It's incredibly sticky and hardens like concrete, so it's great for gingerbread houses. In the bowl of your stand mixer or a large bowl, add in two egg whites. You can separate these by hand using the shells or crack them into a separate bowl and scoop out the yolks with your hand. Pour in your icing sugar or powdered sugar. These are both the same ingredient, just different names depending on where you live in the world. You'll need four cups or 500 grams. Turn your mixer or hand mixer on low and whisk the ingredients together for a few minutes or so until combined. Scrape down the sides of the bowl to get all of the sugar and turn the mixer onto high for about 5-7 to seven minutes or until the royal icing is thick and bright white. It's actually incredibly easy and simple to make. Cover the icing well when you're not using it as it does dry out super fast. It can be kept in the fridge for up to a week. Your first thought may be to assemble the house first, but it's much easier to decorate while the pieces are flat. Using the royal icing in a piping bag with a fine tip, I'm using a Wilton number no. 1 round tip. Pipe on any type of decoration you would like. There are so many different ways you can decorate. I'm going with a minimal all white theme to my house, although my line work isn't the best, so I'm covering most of the roof up with a dusting of icing sugar after. Colourful lollies or candy are great, chocolate or candy canes, just use the royal icing as your glue to stick everything down. 
make sure to leave your decorating to dry and harden for about 6 hours or overnight before trying to assemble it. You don't want to smudge it while you're trying to hold the pieces up to stick together. When you are finally up to the stage of assembling your house, as I know this can seem like forever away, you'll need something to stick it on. You can use a chopping board, a cake board or anything else flat. I've gone for a chopping board that I've covered with non-stick paper. Take the tall side piece of your house and using a piping bag or a knife add a line of royal icing along the edge. Take the front of the house and placing it on the board press the pieces together. Use a mug, a glass or anything else to give the pieces some sort of support while they're drying so there's no chance of them falling over. Attach the back of the house next using the same technique of piping a line of royal icing along the edge and sticking it firmly to the side piece. The royal icing should be thick and strong enough to hold the pieces in place but I always use some sort of support just in case so there's no chance of the whole thing falling down. Before adding the fourth side I'm putting some battery operated lights inside so I can switch them on so the house glows. This looks really great when it's dark. It should be quite firm and strong once you have all four sides attached as they hold each other in place. It's also a great idea to pipe some icing on the inside joins just for some extra support. I recommend leaving this to dry for about 6 hours or overnight before attempting to attach the roof so it won't fall apart under pressure. When you're ready to attach the roof, use the same technique. Find something that is the right height to give the roof support while it dries. For me, this was a tin can. Pipe some of the royal icing along the top of the front and the tips of the side pieces of the house as well as the edge of your roof. Press the roof pieces in place, they should be resting against the support as they won't stay up on their own. You can also attach the chimney here using the icing as glue to stick down both angled pieces that go over the roof, then attaching the two side pieces as well as the front door. If you have any trouble with the house falling apart, don't fret, pipe on more icing and use some more supports to hold it in place while it dries. The royal icing dries like concrete, so give it overnight and nothing is going to be moving around or falling apart. Use the royal icing to cover up any gaps in the house, as two pieces may not have fit together perfectly, as well as adding any other decoration. I'm using the excess on the ground to look like snow and thinning some out with water to pipe on the house so it drips down like snow. For other decorations I'm using cinnamon sticks to look like wood and also some trees I made with the leftover gingerbread dough. Finally you'll need a good dusting of icing sugar or powdered sugar to finish it off and you're complete. I would love to see a picture if you try out making one for yourself. Try not to be too overwhelmed by it, just break it down into steps to do over 2-3 to three days. I hope you enjoyed this recipe, make sure to subscribe to my channel and take a look at my other Christmas recipes. Thank you for watching and I will see you on my next video.